Number 10. Fingerprints are not so easy to obtain. Small guns usually have a bumpy area made by different type of plastics attached to the grip, where usually your fingerprints get in contact with the gun. Unless you touch the barrel of the gun or any other part that has a large, smooth surface, the XE team will have a very hard time recovering any fingerprints from it. But wait. There is a smooth surface that you usually touch when handling a gun, right? The trigger. Not so fast. The secret of obtaining a good fingerprint is that when the fingertip touches the surface of the gun, it needs to stay perfectly still and not move left or right. This is why it's so hard to get fingerprints even from small smooth surfaces like triggers. When you squeeze the trigger, there is a very small chance that your finger will not slip a little to the left or right, and so smirching the fingerprint. Number 9 DNA not always so helpful. Let's discuss some possible scenarios. Guy comes in a store, and rubs the place, but before going to the cashier and ask for all the money she has in the register, he opens the fridge and grabs a Coke. Now the main question. The suspect by touching the handle of the fridge door, did he leave any on it? The short answer is yes, he probably did, but so did all the regular customers who opened that fridge. Another case. Man gets killed in brutal murder. During the attack the man struggles with the killer. Police comes in, decides that the three main suspects are his brother, his wife and his business partner. During the autopsy the CSI guy, finds under the victim's fingernail two matches of DNA. One of his wife and one of his brothers. Case almost closed. One of the two did it. Right? Wrong. As a wife or brother you touch more frequently the victim holding his hand, giving a hug, scratching his back giving the close nature of the relationship. In this type of cases, DNA is usually useless. Number 8 Blood does not glow under ultraviolet light. Most CSI TV shows use UV light to find old stains of blood, but the truth is that blood does not glow under UV. The substance needed to find blood is called luminol, as I am sure a smarty pants like you already knows. But hold on the applause. You probably didn't know that in order to find the blood stains with this miracle substance, the room needs to be pitch black dark, and the reaction between what remains of the blood stain and luminol only lasts for a couple of short seconds. If you are not quick about taking a photo as evidence, you can say goodbye to the cool pictures of old blood stains. Okay. So the UV light has no purpose in a true CSI lab technician's kit. I never said that. UV light is far from useless. UV light can be used to find many type of fluids, like urine, saliva, semen beast milk. Number 7 DNA testing takes time. DNA analysis usually take a lot of time, more than a month to be more precise. Lately a new technology has been making it across CSI laboratories, called Robby DNA. That can make a DNA test in about 90 minutes, but it has some drawbacks, like it's not yet compatible with FBI's database. Even if a CSI lab would have this type of equipment it will still take days for a DNA test request to get processed. Taking in consideration that it can make just 5 tests per run and there are usually 100 of tests requested daily. Number 6 Partial fingerprints are not useful. Despite all the countless CSI movie scenes, when a technician finds a partial print and has a line like, I found a partial. It will take some time to analyze. The truth is that a partial is actually what is most of the time found at a crime scene. To be honest this partials can be analyzed, but the fact that it's just a part of an entire, it means that fewer distinct elements will be present for analysis. Fewer elements mean a larger range of possible matches. This type of evidence can't have any weight in the court of law, so all of these prints are thrown out. Number 5 Forensic analysts are not officers. 
In most countries forensic analysts do not have the power to arrest people, carry a gun or even handcuffs. They are civilians at work in conjunction with the police department. They are not rich like Dexter, they usually can't afford a large SUV or a boat. They are not rich like Dexter, they usually can't afford a large SUV or a boat. They do only lab work and are not exposing themselves to any dangers. They don't go with the detectives to ask the suspects question. They are at the bottom of the chain when it comes to police hierarchy. The only employees that are paid well are the sworn police officers because of the stressful job, the risk they put themselves in, and the stress of having to do with all type of people in the street. Number 4 Not all analyses are conclusive. Hair samples, for example, are not that conclusive as you often show in this TV shows. Just because they found a hair sample from a redhead matching a sample from the crime scene, does not make the owner of the sample guilty. More people with the same ethnic background and same color have matching hair. Maybe it was his brother who did it, or a cousin or a friend of same ethnicity. Don't even get me started on the fiber samples. This type of evidence might offer some help in a case but they are not conclusive evidence. That can't be used in a court of law to prove beyond a doubt the suspect killed the kittens. All this do not apply to DNA and fingerprints. This are usually pretty solid evidence. Number 3 Have the paperwork. Let's go get the evidence. Half the job of the investigator consists in paperwork. In this movies no one does any. It seems like all they do is solve cases, buy expensive stuff and date supermodels. The truth is every crime scene has to be painstakingly documented, that most of it happens in the office. The investigator has to write a report detailing everything he did at that crime scene. Every piece of evidence has to have a chain of custody and description. Photos must be submitted on a CD or other type of media to custody. Number 2 Forensic scientists are not walking libraries. A lot of the times in this movies forensic guys offer their opinion to a large range of subjects. From DNA analysis to trace analysis, from cause of death to entomology. Wouldn't be great to know all there is to know about anything. The truth is that a DNA analysis expert knows a lot of stuff about his field. When he has a question about other fields he asks other experts. Number 1 There's so much blood. This type of movies have the habit of making every crime scene like a swimming pool of blood. Every small injury produces huge quantities of blood squirting from the wound. Very few injuries can produce that much blood and if you lose that quantities of blood, chances are extremely slim to survive. If you nick and mean artery chances are you will die long before that quantity of blood gets out of you. I always like a good horror movie, but damn, that's just too much blood.